So that's the organized effort that's required. That's what we're talking about. Two or more people. Why two or more people? Because two minds is better than one. And when two minds join, you start having that power. We start channeling this power that's available to solve this problem in a spirit of harmony. Now, we have to be willing to support each other to do that. If if we don't support each other, that means we should not be in a spirit of mass. We know we're not in the mastermind. We're just kind of hanging out. So if, 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 um, if you ever seen a team at work where people are envious from each other or people are jealous from each other, they don't get along. The project doesn't move forward and uh, they don't really help. They might as well not have the meeting. They might as well, one of them, be moved to another department. So we're talking about the mastermind. We're talking about power. We're talking about power is required for the accumulation of money. And if you want to earn a lot of money, you got to get this principle right. And I'm not talking about an extra dollar. I'm talking about a huge amount of money. Power is required for the accumulation of money. It's so important. This is probably one of the, my favorite chapters. Now, I spend a lot of time on this because I teach multiple teams how to mastermind companies, teams, executives, um, to how to get together and solve a problem. And how you come in the spirit of harmony. I'm going to share with you some of the rules that we use when we get together in a spirit of harmony uh, for the for the mastermind. But uh, as, as we're getting to the 8 o'clock, 8 or 2, I'm going to get you to say hello and see who you are. And if you're in Zoom, you got to get your camera because when you come to the meeting, you should come to the camera. Otherwise, you might as well stay on audio, right? So like you cannot stay in hiding. You got to open up. So power is required for the accumulation of money. Power may be defined as organized, intelligent, direction, knowledge. Hmm. So if I want to earn a lot of money, I'm going to need some people to help me. I got to find some partners that are willing to grow with me. Like I have a coaching business. I'm looking for partners. I want to grow this business. Why do I want to do that? Because it's good. Because I'm going to help more people. How do I help more people? I help more people through people. So you have to start thinking, right? I don't know everything. I'm ignorant about a lot of things. And I need other people that know websites, funnels, marketing, advertising, branding. I might know the coaching. I don't know everything. A lot of other things. I need to mastermind with people who know that stuff to grow the business. So that's why you mastermind. That's what we're talking about. That's what this chapter is all about. Now, most people would read this chapter and they'd be like, oh, I read it. Okay, it sounds good. Power of the mastermind, nine step towards which is driving force. Hmm, power is required for the accumulation of money. Well, no, you have to think, right? You have to stop and think. Power is required to the retention of money after it has been accumulated. So once you start getting some money, some income, you still need that power because you need to know what to do with it. First, you learn how to earn the income. And when you come and study with me, I can teach you how to do that. You got to earn the income, then you learn how to save the income, and I get a tax, then you learn how to invest the income, and then you're going to learn how to do that again and again with the team. So power is necessary for the retention of money after it has been accumulated. Now, where is this power coming from? Well, we're going to get started soon on that. So let's see some of the principles, uh, the main principles for the mastermind. So Erdi, how are you doing? You want to say hi? You're on Zoom. Can you say hello, Erdi? Where are you from, Erdi? Erdi Reski. Hello, Richie. How are you doing? Hey, good evening, Kamal. Doing great. How are yeah. you? I'm doing fantastic. Fabulous. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. So I want to show you tonight a couple of rules about the mastermind. And uh, I was in one earlier, and they they... They were asking about what are the principles and what are the rules. So it's pretty, pretty um, incredible set of rules. So Erdi, we haven't met. Just want to see if you already want to say hi. And Yuma, you can jump on Zoom here. So Erdi Reski, can you say hi? Hello. Do you know how to unmute? Uh, oh, there you are. There you are. Erdi, how you I'm doing? From, I'm from Indonesia. Awesome. Wow. What time is it over there right now? Uh, right now is uh, 8 a.m. 
a.m. So we're 12 hours different now. For us, it's 8 p.m. for me in the Eastern time zone. And I believe for Richie here, it's probably 7, right? No, no, it's 8 p.m. We're on the yeah, same time. Eastern as well? All right. Cool. Well, welcome. Well, welcome. So like I uh, read for a couple minutes earlier, I started looking at the power of the mastermind tonight, looking at um, how is money really accumulated? And when people come to a mastermind, I want to, you know, share with you some of the rules of the mastermind. Now, these are the rules that I use with the mastermind that I go to. I have two other masterminds, business masterminds. Uh, this is here is more like a coaching, teaching mastermind. But I have two other business masterminds, and we use these rules to help each other grow. And I'm going to share them with you. Okay, I'm going to share them with you in a way to understand some of the concepts that Napoleon Hill and what Bob Proctor taught me on how to do this. Okay. So I have, this is on the screen and you can take a snapshot of it. You can reach out to me and I can send it to you by email. It's all good. The key, the key is what? The key is to come to a mastermind meeting where we are coming to serve, right? And these are like just seven principles that we use to, um, to help set the stage. And they recommend using and reading these every time. So I had a meeting today at one o'clock in one of the masterminds and we read the rules. Now you can do it two ways. You can have somebody read all of them or you can have uh, somebody read the first paragraph, second paragraph, third paragraph, so on and so forth. So let's look at these words and just uh, get a piece of paper and a pen and just, they might mean something to you. They might open up something. The idea is that as we're here, and I'm explaining to you, you're going to get ideas as to why it could be that you're not opening the channels of wealth for you, right? That's the whole point. So I release. Look at that. I release myself to the mastermind because I'm strong when I, ha I have others to help me. So we come together in a mastermind. And we have to release yourself to it. You have to come in in a spirit of harmony because you know you got to be humble enough that when you come to see others, there's going to be help. So you have to be open and honest to come in to help. You have to be okay with um, getting guidance. Right. And initially, I did not like that because, you know, we have this ego thing as men, especially me where I come from, and um, too, too. It's like I, I don't want to feel weak. Well, no, I, it's not about being weak. It's about do you know or do you not know? It's about ignorance or knowledge. So start to allow um, the, the release of that there are better ways out there. If you want to move faster, you have to change the way you're doing things. Look at the second line. I believe. Okay, I believe the combined intelligence of the mastermind creates a wisdom far beyond my own. You know, two people are better than one, three people are better than one, and so on, so forth. I'm sure if we were to get together in a, in a, in a way to help each other, solving one specific problem, we're going to be better together than one. And that's the idea. You come to a mastermind where there's two, three, four people that are willing to help you. Now, why are they willing to help you? Because they need help too. So, you know, Richie is into the accounting and tax world. I'm into coaching and business steel manufacturing. Early, you know, you're in some kind of business and you have ideas, you've been around, you've seen things and so do humor here on Clubhouse. So you see things, you've done things, you have, you know a thing or two. So together, you start getting connecting with each other. You never know who you're going to connect with. I've connected with two amazing individuals that we mastermind together. My life's changed for the better because of them. Right? Let's look at the third one. And if you have a question, you know, just, you know, it's a, Easy conversation here tonight. I understand. I understand that I will more easily create positive results in my life when I'm open to looking at myself and my problems and opportunities from another's point of view. So you see, depending on my background, depending on your background, you got to be open. You got to allow others uh, to give you that suggestion. They have a different experience. What I've seen in tax and accounting is much different than what Richie does. Richie has seen many, many other companies, many other ways. I've only seen it one way. I've only seen my stuff and my companies where I work. Well, Richie's seen, what, 10 companies, 100 companies, 50, I don't know how many. 
So he's seen a lot more. So I gotta be willing to let this experience come to me. And same with you, Erdi. And same with you, human. You you have to bring that experience. So you have to be opened up to see that other point of view. And that's the other side, perception. What this these rules may seem simple, but they really touch on the higher side of us, the better side of us. Instead of the earthly side, they touch on the higher mental faculties, which we teach in thinking into results. And we can talk about that later. Now, the fourth point is I decide. I decide to release my desire totally in trust to the mastermind, and I'm open to accepting new possibilities. Now, this is a free forum right here. I mean, you don't know me much early. Richie does. Uh, you, might, you don't know me much. But once you start getting to know people and you say, hey, I'm going to be in a mastermind with you. Or do you want to be in a mastermind with me? And you start building that confidence. You start building that relationship. So you have to uh, release the desire. And I usually will not share my goal with anybody. I'll share it with specific people. I will, you know, that's how it is. And same to you. As you learn these rules, you're going to find some partners to help you. And you're going to share only some specific things with those partners. Now, number five here, I forgive. I forgive myself for mistakes I've made. I've also forgive others who have hurt me in the past so I can move into the future without a clean state. So this touch based on being positive. You know, you've probably heard of being positive and how do you be positive all the time when all the negativity that's going on? Well, you can be because when you learn to let go and if you come into the um, CRM, and in my CRM, askalrasi.com, I put it here in the chat early. I don't know if you have it or not. Uh, there's a there's a book that uh, you should get. And it's a free ebook, and there's a chapter in there called "Let Go and Let God." Right? And we have to let go of all the negative. We have to let go of all the bad things. We have to let go of so many negative things. And in, in that book, we got to learn to forgive, forgive myself for the mistakes I've made, forgive others. Now we forgive others because of us who have hurt me in the past so I can move into the future with a clean slate. Sometimes we used to, I used to think, but I only share with my experience, that I need, I need, I need to forgive others for them. Now I'm, I'm forgiving you for, for me. We have to let these mistakes go. So important to let it go. So many people are living in the past because you want to move forward. We see we cannot control the past, cannot control the future, we only control now. So forgiving those mistakes, for those who have hurt you or messed up with your business or did something negative, just gotta let them go. You know? Now, I'm not talking about when there's lawsuits and when there's other, that's, that's different. But smaller stuff. And when you know you did a mistake, you gotta let it go. <clears throat> I ask, I ask the mastermind to hear what I really want, my goals, my dreams, and my desires. And I hear my mastermind partner supporting me in my fulfillment. Now, this mastermind thing is that's where the power comes in. So you come and you ask for help. So it's like four, five, six people getting together. And you know, if you go to networking events, there's always people that want to get together. And you know, you'll weed out the bad people or the negative people who are coming to steal instead of coming to give. And you start sharing your dreams and, you know, I want to grow this. How do I do that? I want to do marketing. How do I do that? I want to do, I need a VA. I need, I need some guy. You get ideas. And uh, the eighth point here, I accept. I know, relax and accept, believing that working power of the mastermind will respond to my every need. I'm grateful knowing this is so. So the working power of the mastermind, and that goes back to the beginning. When I started talking about the mastermind, that power comes when there's two or more people coming together. There is power. There is infinite knowledge. Everything that I want to do has already been done. You know, if you want to build a, own a building, somebody already owned a building. If you want $10 million, somebody already has a billion dollars. So everything is already done. The key is how we get there, how you want to get there. What is your, what's going to be your way? So that's why when you get people together, you can solve problems faster. That's how Elon is doing it. That's how Richard Branson is doing it. That's how Grant Cardone is doing it. That's how Tony Robbins is doing it. That's how Henry Ford did it. That's how Andrew Carnegie did it. That's how the Wright brothers do it. So 
you got to start believing that. Don't believe that you're going to get there by yourself. And you can by yourself. I'm not saying you can't. You can. You just, well, it could take longer. It's going to be much harder. I'd rather see you uh, get there faster, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. Hey, Kamal. Yeah. On that last uh, last line, it was cut off a little bit because I was actually writing them down and listening. Oh, sure. I, I, I know, accept, and relax or and accept believing that the working power of the mastermind will respond to my every need. That last line wasn't there. But I couldn't see it before. Okay. I, I am grateful knowing this is uh, okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for asking that. So and the key is this is big. In the meeting that I was training this group on masterminding today, they're new. There was only their fourth meeting. And it takes some time. It takes a few weeks to get to know each other. And that's fine. To start connecting with each other, to start building that relationship. But you have, well, the trust has to be built, right? And how is the trust built in a mastermind? People start showing up on time. People start being there for each other. People start being extra helpful. People start listening more to understand. Sometimes some masterminds that I find on the internet and different Facebook groups, they're not really sincere. They're just there to spy and just steal and not really to help. And it's okay. Everybody starts somewhere. But once you get to some real friend, real connections, you will start finding the right people. And you just have to ask and you shall be given. And the only reason I know that is because that's what I did. And I have two masterminds that have been going now for almost two years. It's incredible. These people are so connected, so well off, so smart. Uh, just change the course. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll share with you a few more as we go along. But the key is come in it to give and ask. You know, the universe will provide. How? You don't need to know the how now. Just know that whatever you want will come to you when you're ready for it. So these are some of the rules that we use. This is recommended by some of the elite people. And so this is Bob. He got the direction from, you know, Earl Nightingale, Napoleon Hill Foundation. And uh, that's what they use. Now, these rules are recommended to be read every time. It kind of sets the tone. Boom. Right at the beginning. I now have a covenant in which it is agreed that the mastermind shall supply me with an abundance of all things necessary to live a successful and happy life. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God and my fellow human beings, to live in a manner that will set the highest example for others to follow and to remain open channel of God's will. I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. This is not a cult, it's not a religion, but it's more people working together for the goodness of others. I want you to be on masterminds that are positive, not negative. Of course, there's negative masterminds too. There's people planning all kind of bad things out there. You know, it's, it works both ways, but um, that's not the idea. The idea is to be in a positive environment to serve others and help humanity improve, not to uh, be in the negative side. Okay. Now, the reason this is important, because I'm going to share with you in a little bit um, more where this power come from, and a video from Bob as to how there's more power available than we could ever think of. And it's all here. We just don't connect to it that easy. Now, in this book, The Think and Grow Rich, and if you don't have a copy, uh, Erdi, let me know if you made you a copy or you can find one online. And I prefer this book. I, I like the book, but I have digital as well. So it says, Let's see where the source of knowledge comes from. Because it's all about ignorance or knowledge. And where does the knowledge come from? Well, there's three sources here. Infinite intelligence, accumulated experience, experiment and research. But actually, before, before I go through those three points, any, any questions early on these uh, on the principles so far? Not yet. All right, cool. It's 8 a.m. It's amazing. It's, it's interesting because I used to I used to work with my uh oriental team in Beijing. You know, it used to be the same thing. Evening time used to be morning. So the three sources, thank you, Erdi, for that. It's cool. 
infinite intelligence. And that's the source of knowledge that may be contacted through the procedure described in another chapter with the aid of creative imagination. So infinite intelligence, I mean, it's like a spirit. It's like um, the information that's available. When you use your imagination, it's like your, where does this information come from? It comes from somewhere. Where, where do these ideas come from? Or oh, everything is on a frequency. So there's a chapter here on the imagination. We'll eventually go through it. It's pretty cool. The second source of knowledge is uh, accumulated experience. The accumulated experience of man, of that portion of it has been organized and recorded, may be found in any well-equipped public library. An important part of this experience is taught in public school and colleges where it has been classified and organized. So if you go to a library, there's all kinds of books, science, physics, accounting, math. There's a lot of information from research. It's accumulated experience over time. So if you want to learn how to build a house, I have a book here from Home Depot that teaches me how to build walls and foundation and accumulated experience. So that's where knowledge and power comes in. So if I'm a builder, I probably should have one of those books but I can't remember everything. And I'll have the book available when I need it. That's Now, the third thing is experiment and research. In the field of science and in practically every other walk of life, men are gathering, classifying, and organizing new facts daily. This is a source to which one must turn when knowledge is not available. So when you don't have the information from experience, when it's not really available, you got to do experiments and research. You create new information. PhD students, doctors, scientists, you know, they're doing lead uh, edge information. But also for that to happen, the creative imagination has to come into play. How do they solve the pandemic? How do they solve the new virus, you know, antivirus vaccine? They need, they need to use their mind. They need to look at the research, they look at the results and use creatively how to solve it. How come some people would solve it so fast and some people would have so many ideas and so many others don't? Or because of the creative imagination, they can connect to it. And you can you can learn how to do that. Knowledge may be acquired from any of the foregoing sources. Infinite intelligence, accumulated experience, experiment and research. It may be converted into power by organizing it into definite plans and by expressing those plans in terms of action. Knowledge doesn't do anything until you put it in motion. Like, I have so much knowledge here. Like, I have... This, this is my last book, you know, Gorilla Publicity, how, how to get known, how to get your name out there. There's a lot of knowledge here. But unless I use it and I put it into action, nothing's going to happen. It's good information. I met the lady. I spoke to her twice. I was on her show today. A lot of good information. But if I don't put it into action, nothing happens. Nothing. I will not be known. No new people would know me. I will not be known. So I got to put this into an organized plan. I got to say, I want to be on this radio show. I want to be on this magazine and move it into action. So that's the three powers of, of information. Now, the mastermind, that's what I'm calling the topic tonight, is so important because if you look at what Andrew Carnegie did, if you look at what Henry Ford did, they created monster companies, like huge, big companies by just connecting people together, working together in the spirit of harmony to solve a problem. Automotive problem, the cars, uh, you know, all different things, steel plants. And that's what you can do to grow your business. Don't do it alone. You got to find somebody to help you along the journey. So I'm going to share with you um, some information from Bob, how he talks about the power of the mastermind instead of me talking, because Bob has this special way to get you connected to the, uh, to the information. So let me find the video. Any questions while I bring it up? Let me find it. I'm gonna go to another page. Now you might be you might have seen some of this before. It doesn't matter. The key is what do you do with it now? Right? The key is even if you've seen it. Do you think if there do you think out of those three things, Kamal, that you mentioned, 
that one, one allows you to achieve your goals faster, whether you receive it from infinite knowledge, whether you receive it from accumulated experiences, or I'm going to call it trial and error, <laughs> but experimentation, I can't remember the exact term you use, but the experimentation um, one, which is there something that allows you is would one of those, um, I guess, rank and outrank the others as far as being able to help you achieve your goals faster? I, I would say if you get a hunch, an infinite intelligence kind of idea, that's very, very good. Once you're in the spirit, once you're into, into the harmony of what you want, that's very powerful. The second one is when you're brainstorming with a team, with a mastermind team, and ideas will start coming together. Uh, that's It's got to come from experienced voice. Like Sometimes what I noticed, you know, I speak from my experience from the Bob Proctor community, some people come without experience at all, and you, you can't take those ideas. Like if somebody doesn't know about funnel and click funnel and marketing, you're not going to take their idea on how to build a funnel. Right. You got to be careful where that information is coming from. I do not get opinions anymore. I don't need an opinion. I want somebody that has experience to help me solve a problem because I want to get there fast. Right. So, so infinite intelligence is my primary one. That the idea that I get, to, we should have all the answers. It should come. Second one is if this team is um, more aware than the average and if they have that experience that has been around, they can connect you. I, I find um, networking with, with people who are like yourself and better usually have lift you up. If you network with lower people a lot, much lower, you're going to be dragged down. You want to be networking with people like you on higher so you can lift you up. Right? So that's, and then, now you might say, well, who's going to network with me? Well, some people need reaching help. People who are earning money need accounting, need tax advice. Uh, I don't know what you're doing early, but people need your skill set. So they're going to want you to be around. Because if I can do it, you could do it too. So, yeah. Let's see how Bob classifies the mass. I think in, in Bob's... Um, you're going to be impressed with this video because it really talks about what is possible for you. I mean, I, I always think about, you know, if in 1900s they did so much, the Edison, the, you know, the Rockefellers, the Henry Ford, the Carnegie's, what's holding us back now? We have so much more. I mean, we have phones so powerful. We have computers. and They didn't have any of that back then. They barely had any phones, but they did huge stuff. It's because we're, we're not utilizing all the power that's available. So let's see. But if you're going to mastermind, you've got to get people that are in. And when you come together, it's like you're bringing all this energy together. Plans are inert and useless without sufficient power to translate them into action. The mastermind may be defined as coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. Andrew Carnegie pointed out that the accumulation of great fortunes calls for power, and power is acquired through highly organized and intelligently directed specialized knowledge. He also said the person who accumulates the fortune doesn't have to have the knowledge. Well, Napoleon Hill found that if you analyze the record of anyone who had accumulated great fortune or many who have accumulated modest fortunes, they've either consciously or unconsciously employed the mastermind formula. He said great power can be acquired through no other principle. Now think about that for a moment. Masterminding. It's the coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people to the attainment of a definite purpose. 
But if you're going to mastermind, you've got to get people that are in harmony. And they've all got to be focused on that one purpose. This is vitally important. This isn't a brainstorming group. This isn't a brainstorming idea. This is a group of people who have all come together to work towards one specific end. Now, Carnegie said he knew nothing about the manufacturing or marketing of steel. And he said he had no desire to learn anything about it. And yet that's where he earned his fortune. But he earned his fortune because he got people who understood what he didn't understand. He got people that had the knowledge that he needed to accomplish the end he wanted to accomplish. He did not have to have the knowledge that's required for the accumulation of the fortune. He could get that through the aid of his mastermind group. Now, masterminding is a very important part of all Hill's work. And it's something that's used by a few people today, but it's not generally used. Now, I have been using masterminding for a long, long time. And I have two or three mastermind groups that I work with. Some of them are smaller, some of them are larger. And I don't meet them all the time. Now, he recommends that if you have your mastermind group, you should meet a couple of times a week. That's not convenient for everybody. But you do want to meet on some kind of a regular basis. And when you come together, it's like you're bringing all this energy together. It's like bringing a group of batteries together. Each battery has power, but you put them all together, it's got a lot more power. People open the trunk of their car and they have these jumper cables and they hook up one battery to another and bang, the car is going. They get the energy from someone else to get their car started. Well, you know, in a mastermind group, you get the energy from other people. You can get the energy from a group to really surge ahead with an idea, to move on to a much higher frequency, to bring in a lot better ideas and bigger ideas. Now, Hill recommended that when you start a mastermind meeting, there are certain principles that are followed. Let me share these principles with you. These are mastermind principles. You begin every mastermind meeting by reading these mastermind principles. Each person reads these out loud, one at a time. Each one has meaning. They start by, I release. I release myself to the mastermind because I am strong when I have others to help me. Now, what do we mean by that? You've got to release your mind to the mastermind. You quit being an individual and you become one of the group. You're in harmony with that group. You become one with the group. So you release yourself to the mastermind. I believe, I believe the combined intelligence of the mastermind creates a wisdom far beyond my own. Well, just a shallow awareness would help you really understand that. You get a group of people together that are all in harmony and they're all focused on the same thing. You're going to have a lot of power that you wouldn't have as an individual. So don't try and go it alone. Get a group of people together that are really interested in helping you get to where you want to go and you're helping them get to where they want to go. It says, I understand. I understand. I will more easily create positive results in my life when I am open to looking at things at myself, my problems, my opportunities from another's point of view. Well, you know, perception is a great thing. Perception is one of our higher faculties. And when we help other people and they help us, what we're doing is we're shifting our perception. We're looking at things from a totally different perspective. And when we do that, we see things that we may never see had we not done that. So, the perspective that you're going to gain in a mastermind goes so far beyond what you can gain on your own. I decide. I decide to release my desire totally in trust to the mastermind, and I am open to accepting new possibilities. In other words, the pro protectionist idea goes out the window. You're not competing, you're creating. And you're making a decision here to turn your idea over to the mastermind. You're going to expose this beautiful idea you've got, this great idea, this idea that's going to take you to where you want to go. You're going to share it. You're going to lay it right out there for everybody to see. And you're trusting these people. 
that's why you're doing that. I forgive. I forgive myself for mistakes I have made. I also forgive others who have hurt me in the past so I can move into the future with a clean slate. Now, you might have had words with somebody in the mastermind group last week, maybe last month. They may have heard words with you. You've got to let all that go. You cannot take any of that energy into the mastermind group because that will just spoil everything. There'll be no harmony. There'll be no resonance. You'll be bouncing around on different frequencies. It'd be like turning on six different radio stations and trying to make sense out of it. You can't get any sense. Everybody's got to be on the same station, listening to the same music. So anything that was done in the past that hurt yourself or hurt the other person, you've got to forgive it. You let it go. That's why this is one of the principles to start out with. Forgive means to let go of completely, abandon, totally let it go. Then I ask, I ask the mastermind to hear what I really want, my goals, my dreams, and my desires. And I hear my mastermind partner supporting me in my fulfillment. Well, it's like sharing the idea. You open yourself up completely. There's nothing hidden. You're transparent. They're transparent. This is the way you create the harmony. And this is how you create the power. When you all come together, that's real power. In fact, Carnegie said, that is the only way to create power. There is no other way. And he said, the accumulation of great fortunes calls for power. Power is acquired through highly organized and intelligently directed specialized knowledge. That's what the mastermind group is doing. They're bringing this together. Not one, not two, but the group. When two or more are gathered together, there I am also. You create a third automatically. You create more power. I accept, I know, relax, accept, believing that the working power of the mastermind will respond to my every need. I am grateful knowing this is so. That's an attitude of confidence. You know what you're doing, you know what's happening, and you're going in there expecting the best. You've prepared yourself. Everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's playing the same game. They're letting go. They're becoming transparent. They're moving on to the same frequency. It's like you're turning everybody onto the same station. Everybody's listening to the same music and things start to click. That's when you create the power and things gel. Then there's a, a dedication and covenant. I now have a covenant in which it is agreed that the mastermind shall supply me with an abundance of all things necessary to live a success-filled and happy life. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God, to my fellow human beings, to live in a manner that will set the highest example for others to follow and to remain an open channel of God's will. I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. Now, what is God's will? A lot of people ask that. God's will is greater good. God is always for expansion and fuller expression. Spirit's always for expansion and fuller expression. God's will is greater good. That's what the mastermind is doing. It's creating greater good. I've created a couple of companies with people through masterminding, and they've been very successful, earned a lot of money. We've had a lot of fun, and we helped a lot of people. But it didn't happen by accident. It happened because a group of us came together with an understanding that Carnegie passed down to everyone. That was one of Carnegie's basic concepts. In fact, that was the foundation of all of Carnegie's success. And he'd be quick to say that. In fact, he did say that. He made that very clear to Napoleon Hill. And so Napoleon Hill, he created his mastermind. You'll see pictures of him with Harvey Firestone, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison. There's pictures of him today. You see that. They came together. He did not create this philosophy by accident. He didn't put all this wonderful information together in such an orderly, magnificent manner by accident. It was done through the power of the mastermind. It was done through help. They worked together. They all came together. Anything of any consequence that's ever been accomplished has been accomplished through the aid of a mastermind group. They may not have called it that, 
It's like he said, every person who has accumulated a great fortune or a modest fortune have either consciously or unconsciously employed the mastermind principle. Are you using it? Now, how do you start one? Well, you start one by picking one person. You go and ask that person if they'd like to mastermind with you. You may have to explain what it is. The person may say yes, and they may say no. If they say no, you want to feel very fortunate that they've openly said, no, that's not something I want to participate in. If they say yes, then you get together. In the first meeting, you're going to know whether you can get in sync or not. You read those principles. You ask, can we adhere to these? Can we adhere to these while we're in this meeting? And it'll either be a yay or an A. If it's an A, it isn't going to work. If it's an A, it's going to work. Now, when you want to add somebody to that mastermind group, you just don't ad hoc go and ask someone. As a matter of fact, if you and I were in a mastermind, the two of us, and you came to me and you said, you know, I've got this woman or this man that I would really like to invite into our mastermind. You wouldn't ask them until you asked me if you could invite them. And I wouldn't say yes or no until I got into their company and I asked myself, am I in harmony with their energy? Or is their energy antagonistic to mine or is mine to them? And I may come back and I say, no, I don't think so. I don't have to tell you why, because I may not know why. The why would be, we're just not in sync. We're not on the same frequency. Where the other person might be. Now, could you be in sync with me, but not with the other person? Yes, you could. It works that way. Or I might say, yeah, I think they'd be a good member. And then we invite them. Now we may have three members, but the same process goes. If any one of us want to invite someone and we're probably looking for someone because you want to build a nice mastermind, I don't think you should have more than eight. It gets a little unwieldy, but you can do it with two. But if there's three, the same process would be involved. Someone would come say to the other two, I've met this man. I think it would be good to be in our mastermind. Well, then the other two would have to get into their, into that person's energy, get into their company. And they would come back and they'd say yes, or they would say no. One might say yes, one would say no, and then they wouldn't be in. See, there's got to be complete agreement. There's got to be complete harmony. If there isn't harmony, it isn't going to work. It's like getting on the same frequency. Everything operates on frequencies. Your body's functioning on a frequency. It'll move in and out of different frequencies, but that's what it is. And when we stop and think of the frequency we're operating on, we describe that by a feeling. You feel really phenomenal. You're in a very high frequency of thought and you can take yourself there. You can take yourself there at will. Well, we can do that in the mastermind group and we can do it so successfully. Now, keep in mind, we've pointed out on a number of these principles that nothing is created or destroyed. Nothing. All the knowledge there ever was or there ever will be is 100%, evenly present in all places at the same time. All the power there ever will be or ever hopes to be is evenly present in all places at the same time. Nothing is created or destroyed. It's such a huge idea to entertain. You and I have the ability to tap into this universal energy and build anything we want. Now, when we do it in a mastermind group, in a group of people that have come together in harmony, you've got phenomenal power. And that's really what you're doing. As a group, you're diving into this sea of wonder and you're building, and you're all in tune. And so you're picking up energy. And when the group of you come together, everybody moves up, not just one of you. You all move ahead. You move on to a much higher frequency. Now you've been aware of this happening, whether it was an organized mastermind group or not. When you come together with another person or a small group of people, and you're really in sync, you're, you're just in sync, and you're really working on something, you start to feel so good. Feeling conscious awareness of vibration. You're moving on to a higher vibration. That's the purpose of the mastermind group. So you come in and you expose your idea. Then you've got this entire group going to universal intelligence, saying, give us what we need. And because of the high vibration you're in, the attraction becomes awesome. You're sending that out into the universe. The universe is sending it all back.
its action reaction is equal and opposite. You put high energy out, you're going to get high energy back. That's where creation starts. This is how we become super creative. And this is how an ordinary individual can achieve extraordinary results. Why did a guy like myself, with no formal education, two months high school, a bad work record, not only broke, in debt. A year later, I was earning $15,000 a month. I had a goal, you see, when I was first given these principles of earning $25,000. And because I kept focused on it, I was prepared to do anything on it. Didn't matter what it was. Somebody said there's good money cleaning floors. So I got myself a bucket and a mop and a floor machine, and I got an office to clean. Then I got another one, and then another one. I didn't run those by myself. I didn't build those by myself. It was a group of us. It was a mastermind group. We were all in sync. We were all excited about this. We didn't realize that's what we were doing. We were using this principle. But he said, anyone who creates a fortune, a great one or a modest one, has unconsciously or consciously. We did it unconsciously. It doesn't matter whether you're conscious of doing it or unconscious. If you're doing it, you're going to win. Many of the most successful people are doing this. They don't even understand what they're doing. But when they gain an understanding, then their conscious competence. Prior to that, their unconscious competence. When a person becomes a conscious competent, they become many times more powerful because they're consciously aware of what they're doing. So they deliberately start to do the right thing. I want you to become a conscious competent insofar as masterminding this concern. If a poor kid with no formal education and a bad work record can earn a million dollars in washing floors in seven different cities in three different countries, I'm quite certain you can accomplish anything you can think of. It's the understanding of the masterminding and the application of the masterminding that gives you the power. And he told you, you need the power. You don't need the knowledge, you need the power. That's the beautiful part. Other members in the group can have the knowledge. Remember what I quoted? The accumulation of great fortunes calls for power. Power is acquired through highly organized and intelligently directed specialized knowledge. But that knowledge doesn't have to be in the possession of the person who accumulates the fortune. Get the mastermind group. Brilliant group of them. All come together. Expose your idea. Get people that are in harmony. Ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to give. Willingly give, graciously receive. They're basic tenets in the mastermind. You willingly give, you graciously receive. You get everybody focused on that star. You get everybody together. They join together. It's like hooking the batteries up. And then away you go. Dive right into universal intelligence with your questions and the answers. Whew. You know that sound on your computer? The email goes out. Whew. That's the way it comes in. And it just flies into you. Is there a law of attraction? There sure is. It's a secondary law. The primary law is the law of vibration. So you're getting yourself into such a beautiful vibration on such a magnificent frequency that that's all you can attract. And you do it through the formation of a mastermind group. Study this, dig into it, really understand it, but apply it. Reading it isn't gonna do it. Talking about it isn't gonna do it. You gotta get in there. You gotta follow these principles and make certain everybody reads everyone out loud. You might discuss each one prior to reading them. What does this really mean? Am I prepared to do this? And you go through it with each member. When they say yes, everyone, you got power. You got power on your side. You've all come together. And there's something there that you can create no other way. Now they were brilliant people. He'll study this his entire adult life from the time he was in his early 20s until he died in 1970. He was well up in years. All his life he studied this and he's sharing it with us. The best thinking of some of the best thinkers. I think it'd be wise for us to make certain we do form a mastermind. We do follow the rules. We create the power and we go where we really want to go. But you see, like with persistence, like desire, like all these other principles, it's got to be for something you really want. You've got to really want it. 
want to sit quietly and say, what do I really want? What do I love doing? You see, I think it's important that we wake up in the morning and we know we're going to spend our day doing what we absolutely love to do. You're not going to put everything into something you don't love. And when it comes to your mind of what you really want, you won't know how to do it. But when you understand these principles, you know the way is here. And you know if you ask, you will receive. Seek and you'll find. It's good advice. And when you do it with the mastermind, it's not only good advice, it's powerful advice. Because there's no other way of creating great power. Now when Carnegie said that, he meant it. When Hill passed that on, he meant it. He didn't just go by Carnegie's word. He went by the word of the 500 super successful people that he studied. And they all agreed on that one point. They might have disagreed and everything else, but they did agree. If you want power and you're going to need it, that's how you get it. Mastermind. Anyone can wish for riches, and most people do. But only a few know that a definite plan plus a burning desire are the only dependable means of accumulating wealth. Part of that plan must include a mastermind group. Get out your notebook. Write Power of the Mastermind in caps at the top of the page. And then I'm going to use this principle in the following way. And then finish that sentence in your notebook. Don't overthink it. Just tune into your own powerful intuition and record on paper what comes to you. Do it now. Lori was going to show up. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I'm Paula. Maybe they're partying, man. What's going on on the Thursday night? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. It was very cool. Yeah, it's interesting to, to really think that it, it could be that simple, right? And it is. We just, uh, a lot comes from the persistent chapter, too. Okay. And having that definite goal and persisting and showing up. So that's cool. So I'm going to pause here for the mastermind. I believe this was awesome. Any questions on what you saw before I pause the recording? No. Um, <clears throat> I, I am more and more becoming convinced, yes, that, you know, mastermind is a way that you get things going. Um, I like to use the term or I've heard the term said before that your net worth is determined by your network. Um, there, it's, it's the people that you know and that you are connected to that will allow you to accomplish so much more than you ever could uh, on your own. I mean, it's that, it's that simple math, that simple, uh, it's not really science, scientific, method that you know you think about somebody you know machine a can lift 10 pounds and machine b can lift 10 pounds you think well if i have machine a and i have well you got two machines machine a can lift 10 mm -hmm. pounds and you got another a duplicate machine a that can lift 10 pounds but it's just so amazing that if you have both of those machines working together harmoniously they can lift more than 20. It's more than 10 plus 10. It's, it's, a, um, it's exponential. It's not just simple addition. It's, it's exponential multiplication of the amount of weight that can be lifted and the amount that those two machines and then we as people can get, can get accomplished. Yeah, I love how you put it. It's so good. It's so true. And I tell you from ex experience being in this material for the last couple of years, your net worth is your network. If it wasn't for what I mean, I would not be, you know, Texan, <laughs> Les Brown, Harrison Klein, Mark. I mean, he just gave us a big endorsement on what we're doing. Okay. And uh, it's incredible. And so 
that, that that's so true and that's how it would happen you know we, we just start building one after the other for you and it's just gonna grow so beautifully so we're gonna be speaking on the same stage together in a few months and I mean, said them all text me whatever you need and it's is doable it is it is so true and it's a power that we need to learn how to use we me average people that, that are coming from somewhere where we did not have much we don't think like that when we have to change how we think right it's uh, it's already here and i didn't even realize that, that i mean as i'm as i'm hearing this video and i've heard of some other things too i realized that i'm actually in a mastermind myself another one um i'm in a a local have you ever heard of bni yeah business that were yeah mm -hmm. so it's been very my you know like you said before some masterminds work well some masterminds you know they fizzle out and people aren't they aren't on the same way mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um this particular chapter that i am in we it is so good it is mm -hmm. so good we all jive together you know, have the same mindset, energetic, past business between one another. It's just, it's, it's been really great to be a part of that. That's good. So. And that's the thing. It's going to keep getting better, especially when the few of you would stick together and start connecting and reaching out. You know, on the first while it's cold and it gets warmer and warmer. And yeah. then the few will result. Um, we just started a new one uh, from Laurel's big table. And there were seven and now we're down to four because three out of the seven just even in four or five weeks they just couldn't keep up with what's going on with with the demand because people they say they want it they're not ready for it mm. and they say oh i don't have time my, my dog needs help my work needs help and life needs help but when you commit to the mastermind to the team you commit like if you have to bring your family with you to the meeting bring it but then so it has to become that important it's not a side thing it's a real thing mm -hmm. and i tell you even these people are multimillionaires. three out of the seven are already out of this new mastermind that we created and it's okay you know you don't have any negative feeling about it it's fine you know they're not ready there's something else going on in their life so so yeah it's it's a beautiful thing that's good good to hear about the bni i'm not in any of the bni with the well, this lady, Jill, she's going to introduce me to a couple of big networks, and uh, that's going to be interesting. So we'll see where, where that goes. So I'm going to pause the recording here, and then we'll start part two. Oh, what happened? Let's zoom now. Here we go. Some